All right. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening, everyone, uh, wherever you happen to be in the world today. Uh, thank you so much for joining this month's, uh, this month's version of our Market Builder Office Hours. Uh, great that you're here. Um, Tracy, do you want to go to the next slide? Oh, this is just our, our little legalese um, slide that just, you know, if we say anything or if you see anything, you really can't hold us uh, to it uh, to kind of give us a little leeway to make some changes as we go. Um, but just some housekeeping items before we get going. Uh, we do have all attendees on mute. Um, that's just to maintain our, our call quality there. Um, so if you have any audio or video issues, or if you have any questions that you're going to want to ask of us, um, we encourage you to use the questions panel um, that you see, not the chat. Um, the reason being is that the questions panel, once the GoToWebinar is done, we get reports afterwards. And if you put something in the questions panel, we'll still be able to see that. Um, so if we don't get around for some reason answering all of your questions today, we'll definitely be able to go back and look at what you asked and get that addressed. Whereas if you put it into the chat, um, once the session is done, uh, we don't have access to that. So any questions, um, please use the question uh, panel. This session is being recorded, um, so no worries there. Uh, the, the, the Market Builder team led by Tracy, uh, she does a lot of clicks and, and does some great demonstrations, so you'll definitely be able to get access to that as well. So speaking of the Market Builder team, um, my name is Stephanie Hammond. I'm the head sales and marketing nerd uh, here at Enable. Um, I deliver all sorts of boot camps. I deliver my own office hours um, on all things program development, pricing, sales, marketing, um, anything that you need to do to really kind of move uh, your MSP forward and make it profitable uh, for you. So if you haven't attended any of my boot camps in the past, um, check out enable.com forward slash events and uh, register. I'd love to have you there. Um, I'm going to be joined today by the Market Builder team uh, led by Tracy Trotche. She's our global customer marketing manager, pretty much um, in charge of uh, Market Builder, uh, our de facto expert when it comes to Market Builder. So she's going to be leading um, the charge today. And she's joined uh, by Tara Batista. She's uh, a Market Builder Program Manager under Tracy, uh, who helps uh, advance, improve uh, Market Builder as well. So I'll pass it over to you, Trace. Thanks so much, Stephanie. And I'm so glad that everybody could join us today. And I will be introducing our special guest in just a couple of minutes. Quickly, I want to talk about why we're doing these office hours. These are very specific. In this case, it's one for um, this one today is for Market Builder. It gives you a chance to talk to us and ask any questions that you have. Um, and it lets you give us some feedback on Market Builder and the content and all the great programs that we have. So we're going to start off today with a quick poll. And I'd really like to know, have you had a chance to customize any of the content? So take a look. This should be appearing on your screen. Um, take a couple of seconds and answer the question and then we'll move on. Um, we've got a lot of great stuff to cover today. Um, we have our special guest who I'm going to introduce in just a second. And then we're going to dive into some really great stuff about Market Builder and the content. And we have some brand new, exciting content that I'm going to show you guys. All right, so it looks like um, almost three quarters of our folks today have customized content and that's uh, oh, sorry, I got that backwards. Haven't customized content and they want to learn how. So I'm going to jump right in and I'm going to introduce our guest speaker today. Uh, it's a little different version of Office Hours today because I wanted you guys to hear from somebody who's been using Market Builder and the content and who's been having some success with it. So he can give you his, um, his view on Market Builder and he can give you, you know, we'll talk about it a little bit. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce Manny. Uh, Manny Lloyd is the founder and CEO of Cyber, uh, Cyber Sleuth, and they're based in Wilmington, North Carolina. Uh, when we were talking just before the session started, Manny said this is his second go around at uh, having an MSP, and he was talking about the differences between this time and last time. So welcome, Manny. Really glad to have you aboard today. Thank you, Tracy. It's good to be here. So let's talk about your experience as an MSP uh, for a little bit and, um, you know, how you've been able to take some of the content of Market Builder that Market Builder has available and apply it to your own business. Sure. So back in 2000 and, uh, 
two, uh, I started an MSP and um, it, you know, the, the, the business model is great, but the help in how to market that term and how to market what you did and things of that nature was a little bit nebulous and because businesses didn't get it, you know, outsourced IT services, uh, IT departments fought you back. They thought you were coming in to take their, their jobs and things of that nature. And you try to relay that message that no, we're here to help. Um, and it just took a long ramp up. I'd say it took me about five years maybe to ramp up to start seeing some, some success. Um, and when I got going, uh, the, the business grew faster than I could handle. And I actually franchised that model um, and sold it. And I retired for a little bit, but then I got the bug back in, again in uh, 20, uh, uh, 20. Um, I knew that um, I saw that Enable had uh, got involved into the game. And when I got Market Builder, that's when everything changed for me. Um, I was able to do growth using Market Builder and even increase my price structure based upon the content and the strategy in the content. Um, probably about 230% um, from in, initially uh, starting with Market Builder because I you know, was using the $65 per uh, endpoint. Um, but using the content in Market Builder allowed me to use a strategy to allow me to change that $65 to $150 per endpoint. And I'm even getting comments from new customers who I just signed up one last week on that model uh, saying that's a great price. That's an unbelievable price. So um, as I as suggested to me, I'm going to keep increasing that price until they say it's too high. But, you know, the Market Builder uh, tools for me is it's like a no-brainer. You know, I, I come in every week and I look at a different campaign. I think I have every campaign launched right now. Um, I think so. Uh, just, <laughs> I just started the, the government one, um, which is right up my alley. Uh, and I've already got um, some leads from that. And I'm talking with people about it. You know, Smart City campaign is really, really good. Um, and um, it's just a no-brainer. And I use the content everywhere. I use it on the website. I use social media, obviously. But I'll take it in other spots, too. And I'll take the content and I'll... I'll, I'll massage it toward the, uh, for instance, we are the official uh, cybersecurity uh, company for a medical group. And so I take everything in the medical campaign and I massage it enough so it's not, you know, the same message all the time to send out those, those, um, um, those uh, campaigns to them. And I would say within a matter of two weeks, I landed two clients off for that, just from out of there. And prior wow. to that, just to give you just to give you some perspective, Tracy. Prior to that, I never could get them to even call me back. Just sending you know emails to them, going, "Hey, you know, I'm Manny Roy. I'm you know, blah." blah. They wouldn't even talk to me. But using the, the 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 content that you guys put so much hard work into, and it's really really good. It's better than I could write. I know. Um, obviously, because I, I immediately got to, when I started using the healthcare campaign, I got two clients almost back to back. As a matter of fact, one recommended the other, and then the other one who I just got, she just recommended another one in South Carolina. So, um, uh, it, it's, it's like a, a new, it's like a, 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 an employee basically that does marketing for you, but a, a, a professional who knows how to write content to get attention. And the model is great, you know, with the landing pages. I put the landing pages everywhere. I mean, I I have blasted the I, I exclusively use market builder content, which I see as a success model that I'm not going to touch it. And as long as it keep it keeps working, that's what I'm, I'm going to continue to do. I just put an RSS feed on my website, and it's all wow. market builder content, and it changes every day. Every time I write an article on LinkedIn or or you know put put that information on LinkedIn, and my LinkedIn um, campaigns. And Twitter campaigns, I would say, with, with no exaggeration, about a thousand percent increase in, in likes, um, uh, because I would write stuff and I would never get a like. Now I'll get two, three, four likes, um, and uh, then I get people who follow me. Then I get people asking me questions. I've even taken the uh, showcase pages of LinkedIn. That that tool, you can go to your company page and build showcase pages. I've built a showcase page for every campaign and market builder and it's it's oh, getting wow. the attention and it's specific to those specific industries I, i've taken the industries and that way i know these people are actually in the medical or the financial industry or whatever the case may be which again 
and it's all um, been, and, you know, and I'm not being paid to say this, folks. <laughs> it's just, this is just what it is. Um, working to my benefit, and um, I really appreciate you guys. It's, it's um, I, I can't say enough about it. I honestly can't. Um, I'm just going to put a little a little plug in here for another part of the uh, the organization, and this is something else that we were talking about a little bit earlier. You were talking about attending one of the boot camps, and I think it was one of the ones that Stephanie runs about oh, yeah. um, using yeah. the costing worksheet and how you know coupling. And this this is how you know Enable can take you can you can work with Enable with Market Builder and the boot camps and start to pull all that together. Yes, uh, exactly. Uh, I took the costing worksheet and I studied it and I studied it and I saw the latest one that has a line out of says manage security and it talks about the EDR and the risk analysis and things of that nature. And I I I took that and went from the you know proactive and managed. And I started selling that, and I went from sixty-five dollars per endpoint to one hundred and fifty dollars per endpoint. And I just sold a CPA firm, a small firm, ten users, um, on that, and that's fifteen hundred dollars versus whatever. I can't do the math, um, and it it doesn't it 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 doesn't cost me any more money, you know, from my side. So the profit margin on that is astronomical, and I went from sixty-five to. 150, which I think is about 230% increase in sales. Fabulous. Oh, that tickled my heart. <laughs> <laughs> Mine too. Tickled my heart and tickled my bank account. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yes, sir. That's, that's, you know, that's, that's uh, good all the way around. So when you think about market building, you think about the content um, that we're providing the campaign, is there something that's missing? What else would you like to see? Um, I don't know if there's anything missing. I, I, I still have not even fully, even as much as I've done, I still have, have not fully utilized it the way my vision is, which the next thing I'm going to start doing is taking the PowerPoint uh, deck and doing my own little mini webinars with those. But the point of the matter is, and I'll get to one thing I would like to see more of, but the point of the matter is that I don't have to spend a whole lot of time trying to keep build that content. If, when I was when I did this back in 2002, I had to build everything from scratch. I had to new. I had. To, I had. I needed to know the terminology, the phrases, the 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 the, the data. You know, one of the biggest things I love about Market Builder is the research. You know, that gives you credibility right off the bat when you can have a link that says according to Verizon or according to the ABA or according to such and such. That gives you so much credibility. It's not like this guy's just <clears throat> pulling this out of his head, he's got actual stats in my industry. That's the thing I love about it is that you go to an industry and you can speak their lingo and you can talk about their their authorities in there. That is so big. I would love to see more of that. I mean, it, I, I just think okay. it's enough of it. I would say it's not. A, it's not like it's not enough. It's a, it's a ton. I, I I just I just love that. Um, recently, you guys came out with a video for Microsoft Backup, and and that is going to be awesome. Um, what I would like to see, I don't know if this is something to talk about on this call, is that the last slide, if I could put my logo in there. Um, yeah. But but that that even if I don't, I'm still going to use those videos because, you know, video content on YouTube. And that's the other thing that I didn't tell you guys about. My SEO has gone from being on the 10th, 8th, 7th page to the first page when you type in cybersecurity for my city. Okay. Um, and that's because of the content that I'm using. It's all consistent. It, com coming out of Maine's head, it may be all over the map. I'm, I'm talking technical jargon that people are not searching for these things. But whatever you guys are doing, whatever formula you're using, it's working in the Google algorithm to pull my pages up f further to the top. I'm on the very first page now because of market building. And that's no BS. That's awesome. So. That that's one thing I forgot uh, to mention too. But I, I I can't say that uh, I I can see anything right at this moment, uh, Tracy. But the the videos are going to be awesome. That's that's going to be awesome, especially when I start doing my little mini webinars. But again, I don't have to think of the content. I just take a slide deck, I modify it, and from a sales presentation to a demo or or, or to a um, to an actual um, a YouTube video or Vimeo video. Um, uh, to do a, uh, uh, you know, just put content out there. 
but I can't think of awesome. anything right off the top of my head. Awesome. Yeah, the the, the video, so um, it is something we're going to talk about in a, in a little bit in today's presentation. We have added a video to the uh, backup for Microsoft 365 campaign. Unfortunately, um, the way things are built right now, we can't, there's no customization capabilities inside the video. And I'm, you know, we're working um, in the background to figure out what's the best way and the easiest way for all of our partners who are using um, Market Builder to be able to um, customize a video. It is a challenge because um, not everybody's a video editor. And um, in some cases, it takes a very specialized tool set. So we're trying to figure out the, the best and the easiest way to do it. But for now, we're leaving the, um, the videos with uh, no branding and um, fairly generic language. Then there is another one in the works. And uh, Tara will be releasing that in the next, I want to say, two to three weeks, uh, maybe a little bit longer. Um, but it's going to be focused on security. So that's, well, that's uh, awesome. Yeah, so we, we've got, we're trying to get a video every month um, for the next well, little while. So we start to build up a, a nice little video library. One of the things that I heard you say, Manny, and I want to talk about this, touch on this for a couple of minutes, and then we'll move, move along to the rest, rest of today's session, is you talked about um, the fact that you're getting referrals, right? And I, I think here the key to, to, to touch on with this is that referral marketing and, and getting referrals on their own isn't a marketing strategy, but then when you start to pull it together with the digital program that you're running with Market Builder, the referrals just seem to come a little bit faster and a little bit easier. Yes, yes, they do. Uh, I've always thought that, you know, I was one of those IT people that thought, oh, okay, referrals. No, they didn't really work. But like you're saying, the, when, you, when I used the marketing uh, the way I did and um, I went to the association. I said, "Hey, look, you know, I'll give you guys X percent off for your your, your customers or for your members. Um, and if they like the services enough, I didn't even ask. And one of the, the healthcare people said, "Hey, you know, this is really great. We, everyone should have this. Did, have you talked to such and such? Uh, no, I haven't. Can you get the information? And you, you follow up. Next thing you know, now the same person who was referred to me, she's also referring another person to me." And it's just organic. I'm not even asking for it. They like the services so much. And of course, the enabled services are great. You know, the RMM tools uh, is what I use. I don't use the in central. I'm not there yet, but the RMM tools are what I use. And um, because they're great, because of all the tools that are involved in that and how smooth they are, it, 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 it delivers on the promise. So the marketing part, I see it as the promise. I promise to do this, right? And then you deliver it with the actual product, um, the RMM tools and things of that nature. And so it just, the, you know, I was amazed. I, I'm still amazed at how I, you, how I missed out on something like this. I wish I would have had it, but you know, that's the word under the bridge. But moving forward, my 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 life's a lot easier now that I don't have to uh, do um, as much work as I did before to build a, a MSP business. Awesome. Well, Man folks, Manny's going to be around for the rest of the session. He is available for questions. So please, if you have any questions uh, you want to ask Manny directly, go ahead and pop them into the question and answer panel that we talked about a few minutes ago. And we're going to go now and you know, thank you, Manny. Stick around. I'm sure there's going to be questions. And if you have comments or you want to pop in and, and say anything about what I'm going to talk about next, please feel free to do so, Manny. Your opinion is, is so valuable. So moving on, moving on in, go ahead, Andrea, Steph. Just before we get going, yeah, there is one question that popped into the question panel, um, and it's just about getting a copy of the recording. Um, we will get it cleaned up um, and then make it available. Uh, how do partners get a copy of the recording? Do you know that? Jess? I will send it to them. Awesome. So um, so if anybody is interested, like, do, will you send it to everybody on the line today, or do you want people everybody, to Everybody who attends, they will get a copy of the webinar today. Fantastic. Perfect. Thanks, Trace. Ah, so Manny, we have a question for you right out of the bat. And uh, Nathan would like to know if you use Market Builder for potential clients or existing clients as well. Both. I use it for both because I, MSPs can be really can really get quickly outside out of mind. And if you don't keep touching them with something, something that's that's short, sweet, and to the point, and and 
it's all about value, right? So the market builder, for instance, if you look at the um, trying to upsell, uh, manage uh, backup, or uh, I'm sorry, uh, Microsoft Office backup, right? There's a campaign for that. If you can just, if you, you know, I use that. And I've actually have a customer who's now going to buy that. But they would have never known that I did that because they only knew what I was doing for them already. They didn't know anything else that I did for them. So that made it easier for me to get that message to them, but I'm always touching them as well. So the upsell is always there, but it's not too strong. It's not too overbounding, but, um, but I use them. I use both. I use everything in market though. Thanks, Manny. For both in, you know, in clients I have and clients that I'm looking for. So um, one of the things Manny had talked about was that he grabbed the content that is now available in the local government uh, vertical. So we have a new campaign uh, focused on government. Tara is working on a campaign right now that's probably going to go live in the next 10 days or so focused on the insurance industry. Um, and that's a nice little coupling up with the financial services um, campaign that we have. We've also recently updated the EDR campaign, and that's the primary EDR campaign. That's the one that's been around the longest. That is um, our, our mother campaign. Uh, the EDR campaign was the first campaign built in Market Builder in May of 2020. There's a little trivia for you. All right, so let's take a look at some of the things that have changed in the campaigns. One of the things we've done, and we've heard you guys giving us the feedback on the descriptions. You wanted a little bit more information in the descriptions. So we've given you that now in the descriptions of each campaign. Tara and her folks are working on getting these updated. So you'll see the key messages have been pulled out, the target personas, and we're also giving you some keywords and key phrases that you can use inside your own SEO. Now, uh, Manny had talked about how his SEO has uh, improved, his rankings have improved using the Market Builder content. That is awesome to hear. Um, and one of the things that you will notice is that this content is very keyword rich. And we've done that very intentionally so that it is content that you can use in your own local SEO programs. And I meant to mention that, Tracy, that, that the reason why I think my SEO changed is because Google looks for consistency in the language that you use. And so more of that, please continue to, to put those keywords because also it works well with Twitter and LinkedIn to have those keywords. And if it's consistent with the campaign, so now you have a consistent message and it, 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 the algorithms yeah. are going to appreciate that more. Yeah, yeah. And so this is what we're showing. Whoops. Ah, er, 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 sorry. My mouse decided to have a little meltdown. So this is what we're showing here is, you know, the enhanced campaign description, what, what that looks like. Um, we touched on this very briefly that we have the new content available, which is our new video in Microsoft 365 for backup for Microsoft 365. I'm going to switch my screen now. I'm just going to stop sharing for a minute. And then when I come right back, I'm going to be, we're going to work right in Market Builder today so that everybody can see um, how Market Builder works. And I can show you some of the tips and tricks in Market Builder. So one second here. All right. Let me know if you all can see Market Builder. Manny, can you see Market Builder? Yes. Awesome. All right. So when you log in, this is the first thing you're going to see in Market Builder. And I know this is now I'm talking to the folks who said they have not had a chance to customize anything in Market Builder yet. So the first thing I want you to do when you go into Market Builder, click on this little icon here beside your name. You're going to open settings and we're going to complete our company profile. Come through here. Make sure that you put in your complete URL. So that's going to include the HTTP, uh, HTTPS, colon, and then the two hacks. And then you're also going to double check your time zone because this is going to impact how and when you post social media posts. So we're going to get that done. We're going to make sure that your um, uh, address and state or province or whatever are correct. And then you have two options here. For our folks who are in uh, the European Union or the UK or anywhere where you have very, or Canada, Anywhere where you have very strict data, reg, uh, data privacy regulations, click this button. Anytime you have somebody who is not, that you have not spoken to within six months or a year, you want to make sure that you have that opt-in authorization button clicked. That's really important. If there are folks that you, you know, if you're going to use this, as, as Manny was talking about a few minutes ago, to upsell and cross-sell to your existing customer base, you, and you've been talking to them, you don't need their opt-in authorization. You already have it. 
But for those folks that you don't have their opt-in authorization, you really want to make sure you have that. And then always click to make sure that any unsubscribes are added to the global suppression list. This is really important. You want to make sure that those folks that say, ah, don't want to hear from you anymore, that you are capturing them and you are not emailing them anymore. Next on the list, the email footer. So this is not where you put your phone number, your email address, and all that stuff. This is where you're going to put a special message. So if you are going to be closed for the holidays, or if you've changed your phone numbers, or if you have a special offer coming up, this is where you're going to put that information. It's typically very time limited. So you're going to put that information in here, you're going to save it, and then it's going to be appended on the footer of all the emails that you send out of Market Builder. When the special is finished or the offer or you've moved or you know it's been 60 days and you figure by now everybody knows your new phone number, you're going to turn it off. We're going to talk about this for a couple of minutes here because this is where some people have a lot of questions. Every account, um, every instance of Market Builder, so for all of you folks, you start with 2,500 mailing credits every month. This resets every month. So it's not a drawdown, it's reset every month at 2,500 mailing credits. Now, I know some of you have healthy databases that have more than 2,500 names, and you wanna be able to talk to those folks right away. But we have to help you, main, help you establish and maintain a healthy sender reputation first. So we'll start with the 2,500, and you can, you know, you don't have to put in one whole list of 2,500. You can put in lists of 500 or 200 or whatever, test messaging and, and test um, the, different, the different vertical markets and so on. So how do we help you get a good sender reputation? You have to maintain some consistent marketing activity. Now, here it says sent a mailing in the past six months. Personally, I'd like to see it in the last 60 days. Use 50% of your current mailing credit capacity. So in this case, you're gonna look about 1,200, 1,250 on a consistent basis, a high engagement rate. So the engagement um, talks to the open and click through that you get in your email program. What we're seeing kind of across the board from our folks that are using Market Builder is an open rate of anywhere between 20 and 35% and a click-through rate of between 18 and 25%. Those are really good numbers. Those are numbers I wish we could have on a consistent basis in our enable campaigns. Then a low bounce rate of less than 5%. Don't panic. That's not a huge, a huge number. Um, but this is also only the hard bounces. Your unsubscribes don't count to that, and your soft bounces don't count to that number. It is a hard bounce number. So you wanna make sure your list is really clean. You wanna make sure that you have good names and good email addresses in there. Same thing with a low unsubscribe rate of less than 1%. You should be able to hit that fairly easily with a good, clean list. And then finally, the, and I think this is the biggest one here, honestly, is the low or no spam complaints of less than 0.10%. That's really important. And that speaks to how you're gathering names. And if you have actually put your, um, you know, if, you, if you're renting lists or you've attended an, an event and you've just, you know, shoved in a bunch of names from business card gathers, then you want to actually then do a proper engagement with them and reach out and say, hi, we met at or we were talking at, you know, you want to introduce yourself to them so you get their buy-in and then that will eliminate some spam complaints. Let's move into social media really fast. And then I want to get into customizing some campaigns for you folks. So folks can see how, see the magic and how it's done. When you first log into Market Builder, this of course will be empty and you can add in your LinkedIn, Facebook or Twitter accounts. And you'll see here, I have my Twitter and my, my LinkedIn associated with so with uh, market builder and then you want to turn on the social streams this will actually allow the social posts to flow once you set up your social media account the social media posts to market builder fall under four big buckets business efficiency data protection in general information and small business security we have them set right now that every post in those buckets requires your approval before we send them out. However, you can change this. If you want to ignore something on, you know, ignore the general information post, you can turn that off. If you say, you know what, just auto publish it. I don't care, just auto publish it. Then any post with that will auto publish if we set the post up in that way to be auto published. So we have a couple of questions. Okay, Gabriel, um, I'm going to talk about this in just one second. 
Gabriel is trying to find a campaign targeting the advantage of signing up with an MSP. I think, Manny, you've used that campaign, and that would be the one called the value of um, explaining the value of MSP services, or I can't remember what it's called. Yeah, yeah, that's what it's called, value of using an MSP. I've used that campaign. Okay. So when you come into Market Builder and you pop into Browse Campaigns, first thing you should do is put on your language filter because otherwise you're gonna see every campaign and it can get a little overwhelming. So in this case, you can see that I have the English USA filter turned on right now on Market Builder. That's the first way that you can find a campaign. The second way is you can search by most recent or you can do a, a descending AZ name. But these are my two favorite personally. It's the most, you can sort by most effective. So these are the campaigns that we know that are most effective in generating leads for MSPs. These are the campaigns that are most popular uh, amongst the rest of the MSP community that's, that's using Market Builder. Now, you might think that these are the same. These should be the same list, and they are. There are very, there's a lot of similarities between the two. Um, but if we click on most effective, we'll see that usually EDR is number one or number two, and that's because primarily because it is one of the, it is the oldest campaign. It's the mother campaign. There she is, she's number two. Um, and there's the value of managed services is number one. So we'll dive into that campaign in just one second. Or you can go by most popular. And these are the campaigns that are getting, you know, most hits and people are interacting with them more than the other campaigns. So again, there's EDR first and there's backup from Microsoft 365. Um, cybersecurity awareness is number three and there's the value of managed services. So let's pop into this campaign for a second. Now, I know I had said that we were, uh, that Tara is leading the charge to get the, um, the campaign descriptions redone. We're going through, there's a lot of campaigns to go through to get redone, and so she's taking them on and she's uh, walking through them. So you'll see when you get into a campaign, they all kind of have a similar look and feel. They have a number of emails, a landing page or a web plugin, social media posts, Customizable collateral, and this one has two. And then the reference material, which is the call guide and the um, PowerPoint deck. I'm not gonna open these two for you today. You can go in and you can take a look at these. Um, but the PowerPoint deck is 100% completely customizable. There's nothing in there that you can't customize. The whole thing is up for grabs. You can grab it. You can take as much or as little as the content um, in these PowerPoint decks. Um, most of them run between 12 and 15 slides long, so you can make them longer, you can make them shorter. It really is up to you and how you want to customize them. The call guide gives you some great conversation starters, some great information on how to ask for the sale, how to ask for the meeting, whatever the call to action is that you want to have. And it also gives you some, some um, tips on overcoming objections as well. So there's a lot of information just in those two pieces of content alone. Hey, Tracy, can I say yeah. something real quick? About Absolutely. That? That, that one campaign you just pulled up is what I use to my existing customers who are pretty much break fix um, mm -hmm. and looking at the value of, and one customer won so far, and I'm, I'm, I know more will come, turn from a break fix to a managed services customer from that campaign. Awesome. That's awesome. So now I've turned this campaign into, I've put it into a bucket. So now I can start working within the content of the campaign. And so you can see it all here and it's laid out as emails, the collateral, here's the content that I can download right here, the web plugin and the social media post. When you're building a campaign, you always start with the collateral. So in this case, I'm gonna grab the sell sheet here, the value of managed services. I'm gonna edit this. It comes with a file name. You don't have to use that file name. You can change it to be whatever you want it to be, whatever your file name structure is. Oh dear, that was unexpected. Uh, let's look at the PDF instead. There we go. Let's look at this one, the infographic rather. So this is an infographic. Um, we'll go back and we'll look at that uh, cell sheet in a minute, but it was not, uh, it was throwing an error for some reason and I'm not really sure why. So this is the other piece of collateral that goes along with this campaign. This is a little infographic that we've done. And you'll see here, I've customized this already, but it's really easy to do. And Manny can talk about how simple this is in a second. When you come in the first time, this is going to say company logo or corporate logo or words to that effect. You're gonna grab your logo, you're gonna pop it in, you're gonna save it. 
But before you do, oops, you'll see this little button here called Save as Default. Click that once and click Apply. When you do that, what that does is that now puts your logo everywhere. So you only ever have to add your logo in once unless you change your logo. But you add your logo in once and wherever that code is that says company logo, it is going to add it and it is going to pop it right where it needs to be. It will dynamically size it and it will position it correctly. Now, one of the things to call out here is make sure your logo is horizontal, not, not um, portrait. Because the sizing, we're trying to figure out how to manage some of the logos, uh, some of the, the issues we're having with logos that are more of a portrait style as opposed to a horizontal style because they don't um, they don't roll in quite the same way. But if you have a logo, as you can see here, that is more of a horizontal style, it fits really nicely. Same thing, add your name, your company URL, email and phone number, save as default, and then it, it finishes it for you. Save and next. And you have a PDF that is customized and ready for you to go. It's that simple. And it's the same thing with the emails and with the landing pages as well, but they all look just a little bit different. So now we've done the, the sell sheet. Now we're gonna take a look at the web page. When you come into a web page, again, it has a file name, save and next. How it differs from the PDF is you'll notice right out of the gate, there's all these little dotted lines around everything. And this means wherever you see a dotted line, you can edit, you can change that. So if you have changed your logo, you can pop a new logo in. If you don't like that headline, change it. If you'd rather have a different image, you can change that too. When you click into the body copy, it opens up a simple text editor and you can edit the copy any way you like and um, really make it your own. Now you can also edit the headline and the call to action, and you can um, edit and change the color of the call to action button in the background. Again, letting you really customize this and make it your own. Now, when Tara builds the campaigns, she builds the campaigns with the email links to the landing page and the landing page links to the collateral. So it links to the sell sheet. If you don't want to go to that link, if you've taken that collateral and you've hosted it somewhere on your website or somewhere else, and you want to use that URL instead, you can pop that URL right in there and then save. And what that does is that breaks the link that Tara's built and it puts your own link in there. So it's a really cool way to customize Market Builder and customize the content. You can add your own social media links and they will appear at the bottom. Just make sure you have your, your URLs. I'm having trouble with URL today and save as default and then save and next. And then you can now, and, and um, Manny can talk about how easy it is to turn a landing page into a web page because the landing, the, these landing pages actually can be web pages on your website and you just grab the embed codes and away you go. Exactly, it's just, again, uh, it's easy. Uh, I use WordPress, so I will just put in a, um, uh, uh, I forget what it's called, WP Baker uh, Bakery, and open up a JavaScript, or and you can put it on the page. Or sometimes I just let it use the actual zip solutions, uh, the default um, a landing page. If I'm in a hurry, especially, and I don't want to try to go put it on inside of my web page. But it's either way, it's just I don't know how many. I'll people pay too much attention to the URLs. I know a lot of IT people are concerned about branding in that in that fashion, but so far it hasn't been a problem for me. Awesome. Thanks, Manny. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna take a quick look here at emails. I'm gonna run through this really fast because um, I know we're running out of time and I have a couple of things I really wanna to get to. So this is now, uh, we're gonna customize an email and you'll see the emails come with their own subject line. You can change that if you want. The sender name and the sender email address is always going to default to whomever has signed up for the account. Excuse me, but you can change the sender email address and you can pop in a reply to email address if you want as well and save the next. And just like our landing page, you're going to see all these little dotted lines around everything. And this means you can change everything that is inside those dotted lines. 
Now you'll notice as well, I've added a little bit more customized customization here. I've added a greeting and I've added a signature block. This is really important. If you really want to boost your open rate and your click-through rate, it really is a great idea to try out some personalization, you know, saying, hello, Stephanie, or hi, Manny, or greetings, Tara, you know, whatever, what, however you would use, whatever language you would use, you can customize it right there. A word about that, though, is if you are going to use first names when you're loading in lists into Market Builder, um, make sure that you have first names in the first name field. This no system that I have found for marketing automation is smart enough to be able to distinguish between the word Manny and a bunch of garbled letters like <laughs> H-J-K-L. They, all they will see is that there's letters in there and they have to put that in the first name. So take a couple of minutes when, before you load in your list if you're going to use this level of personalization. Make sure that you have first names in the first name field. If you, have, if you see a name that are, or letters and you're just not sure, Delete it out of that field, and then what will happen, and don't put anything in there, when, then when you merge the email with the, the list together, it's just going to say hello. It's not going to try and, and put in something else in there. It will be helpful if you increase the limit of emails. Yeah, I, I agree, John. It would be great if we could uh, increase the limit of emails. If you want some help with that, reach out to me um, after the call, and we can set up some time to review um, how you've been doing and um, get you some more emails. Uh, this little button up here will become your best friend. This is your send test button. You're going to click that. You're going to pop your email address in there every time you make a change and you're going to send a test. Use that button often. It counts to nothing. It does not count to your monthly total. It doesn't count to anything. Then you're just going to simply follow the steps. Save and next. And, you, you know, in this case, I've got a bunch of test lists in here. You're going to grab your list, do save and next, and I'll show you in a second how you're going to load in a list. Now you get, now the fun begins. Now you can decide when you're going to send out an email. So you can send it out now, or you can send it at a specific time and date. The email campaigns are set up as a, as a pure drip campaign. You can send one email every Monday, and you can set up those emails all at once, in a campaign, so you say, this one I'm going to send out on Monday the 21st, then you go do the second one, I'm going to send it out on Monday the 28th, and so on, and schedule it, and then go away. Um, you don't have to do anything more than that. Um, Tara is working right now on setting up our first nurture campaign in Market Builder, which is really exciting, because then what you guys are going to be able to do is set up an entire email program, and it's going to nurture the people along based on how they interact with each email or not. If they don't interact, then you know, if there's a lot of power in that nurture campaign, and I can't wait till we can show you guys how that looks. That's now, awesome. if you want, if you're going to use um, uh, the email, and you want to load in a list, you're going to go into sales. We're going to add contacts. We're going to do a file import. Typically, a CSV file works best. Make sure you have that header row. The header row that you need should say first name last name separately, please, first name and last name separately, email address and company name. That's really all you need to begin. If you want to put more in than that, you absolutely can, but at the very least, you need first name, last name, and email address, especially if you want to do any kind of personalization. Uh, yeah, uh, somebody's asking about uh, use the entire contact list Excel. Many contacts failed. Yes, um, so you really should have that header row and you want to make sure that the email list is separate, right? So you've got first name in its own field, last name in its own field, email address in its own field, but also take a look at those email addresses that have failed. It may very well be that they are, um, there might be something wrong with the actual email address. You might have, a, one of the things I've noticed is sometimes it might be instead of .com, you have the C and then the, the dot. So the email address itself might not be 100% correct. I always find, um, in my experience, it's a lot easier just to use a straight CSV file to upload that. Okay, now John had asked a question about, can you create your own campaigns? I'm gonna show you a whole other side of Market Builder that is really super cool. You can actually use Market Builder and create your own very own campaign. So we're gonna create your own campaign. Now let's call this John's 
I'm going to call this John's Welcome Campaign, and we're going to create it. And so now, what this has done is this has created a campaign bucket. So everything is everything is ready to go. I just need to add stuff to it. So I'm going to add an email. And I'm going to come over here, and instead of grabbing emails that have already been created, I'm going to create my own. And I'm going to call this Welcome to my MSP. And I'm going to create it. And now I'm going to edit this. Now, if you've done anything in Market Builder and you've created emails, this is going to look really familiar because now you've got the email subject line, the sender name, and the sender email address, which is exactly the way it looks when you're building your own email. In this case, it's grabbed the subject line, which is the same as the email name. You can change that. And I'm so right now I'm pretending I'm going to create an email that I'm going to send out every time I have a new partner. And now I have some templates that I can use. I can use either a blank, a basic newsletter, or one column. I'm going to grab this one. And now I can do pretty much whatever I want in here. I can grab uh, a new image. So I'm going to pop in. I'm going to change the image. You can upload. You can import. Or there is also a free um, photo library here that you can grab. In this case, I want this one that says welcome. And there it is. You can, you know. I'm going to add in my copy. This really takes the customization of Market Builder to a whole other level. So instead of just having the content that we provided for you, you can use a blend. You can use this content. You know, you can use the pre the pre created content and customize that and edit that and make it your own. Or you can come into Market Builder and you can create your very own campaign using your very own content, which is really really cool. I hope that answers your question, John. Uh, yeah, so are there any plans to integrate email lists with PSA tools? Edward, that is a really good question, and that is something that we've been talking about with um, the, the company. So uh, Market Builder is built on another platform, and we're talking with them about how to integrate their platform with PSAs. So we are looking at that, and I'm hoping that that's going to be um, on our roadmap sometime this year. So we haven't talked about social media yet, so I'm just going to pop right back in. And there's three ways that you can interact with social media inside Market Builder. There's the campaigns that are affiliated with each social media post. And those are pretty straightforward. You go in, and we'll just take a quick look here. Uh, whoops. Where did it go? All right. It didn't pull over. We'll just grab some social media posts here from this campaign. Select none. And continue. And continue. I know sometimes this, uh, this little beastie feels like it's very click heavy, and it is, but that's a good thing. Make sure that it wants to make sure that everything is going the way you want it to. So when Tara builds the campaigns and she puts the social posts together, the social posts automatically come scheduled to run every day. So you have a post today. You don't have to stick to that schedule. You can change the schedule to meet your own needs and your own social media requirements. If you want to do a post a week, you can do that. But you've got a lot of posts in here that you can edit or you can skip. You can change the dates. Um, really take a look at the posts and make sure it's linking where you want it to and that you have all the information in there that you're hoping to have in your social media post. Now, one of the comments I've heard is you've got some really weird times in there, like 9.13, 9.08, and 12.25. That's done very deliberately. That's done because we know that the big social media bots that do all the posting do it at the, tend to do it at the top of the hour, the quarter of the hour, and the bottom of the hour. So we try and avoid those times and do odd numbered times. You don't have to. You can change the time that those posts go out if you want to. That's one way to interact with social media. Number two is in the actual library. So there's anywhere between 200 and 1,000 posts in the social media library. Um, and so it does take a while to load in. But you know, if you're looking for only LinkedIn posts, just go ahead and click only LinkedIn. But you'll see there's something over here called create a post. Click on create a post. 
And this is really great. If you want to do something, you know, if you want to talk about something that's going on in your area, something that's very specific to your business or your community, or you've got a, you know, a special offer coming up, you can pop in your message there and then away you go. You can either auto schedule, which lets the system take over and it will post the best time. You can select your time and date or you can post now and away you go. Same thing here. So you see our library posts have showed up. Click on the plus sign and you can decide which of the uh, which of your social media networks you want this post to go to. And you can click, you can select auto auto schedule, select time and date or post now and then approve it and away it goes. Okay, so are there any more questions about what we've seen here? Uh, good question. Why does Instagram uh, not appear in social media? Because we haven't added it yet. We're working on getting uh, Instagram in there. It's not one that most people have requested, but it's something that we are looking at adding. And that's a really good question. Adam is asking, how do you know what URL to put in on the social pages if you have a company and a personal account? So if you come back here into social settings, you'll see that it is added both, I've added both my personal and my company page. So in this case, it's the Enable Market Builder page, as well as my personal account. So if I wanted to go into a social media post, it's gonna have both of those listed, right? So both of those, um, it's gonna have two uh, LinkedIn icons and I can pick whichever one I want to post to. Uh, all right, so let's now go back. I'm going to stop sharing here for a second, and I'm going to go back to my PowerPoint deck. All right, come on. There we go. And I think we have another poll that we're going to run right now. Yep. All right, so we'd just like to know what type of content you're most interested in. I wanna make sure, you know, Tara and I really like talking to you guys. And we wanna make sure that the content that we're giving you and that we're providing in Market Builder is the content that you're going to use most often and uh, makes the most sense for your, your business. Um, Manny, is there anything you want to add? Well, um, I think you've done a great job covering everything. Um, you know, <clears throat> if 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 this is means anything to anyone, I just use what's there until I get fully comfortable with making modifications. I don't make too many adjustments because these guys have done such a great job putting everything together. I don't want to break the formula. One thing I did learn is you can try to overdo things and uh, taking advantage of uh, uh, the team here and what they've done has been beneficial to me and I'm not gonna change that until something breaks. So I don't really know how much I had to add. Thanks so much, Manny. Um, so thanks to everybody who answered that slide. Uh, we talked about this really quickly, which campaigns to start with um, and adding new users to Market Builder. This is probably one of the most common questions I get is how do we add people to Market Builder? It's really straightforward. When you go into settings, it's the first thing you see is your new users, you're gonna add them right away. And we're going to move now into, I'm gonna turn the mic over to Stephanie Hammond. I have one final poll that I'm gonna launch here for you folks. And Stephanie, I'm gonna to turn today's, the rest of the session over to you. Okay, can you bring up my uh, slide then? There you go. This is my little plug, right? My reminder slide? Yep, you should be able yeah. to see it. I do not see it. I see the poll oh. slide. Am I not sharing my screen? Uh, yeah. No, I see the poll slide. Too. slide. Hang on. Oh, oh, it decided to freeze on me. Okay, there can we see my screen? All right, right. there, there we, go. we go. That's, that's what I want. So, uh, yeah, so thank you, uh, Tracy. So just um, a plug for the business office hours. So again, we have two separate set of office hours for the business side. So Market Builder that Tracy uh, and, and Tara run, that is completely separate from the office hours that I run as the head sales and marketing nerd. So I just actually had my office hours yesterday. Um, 
uh, went really well. I had lots of great uh, questions. We were talking about pricing um, for, for different things, um, you know, how to build your contracts. Uh, so the office hours, just like they are here for Market Builder, they're meant to answer any of your business, sales, marketing, program design, pricing types of questions. So my next set of office hours is taking place March the 23rd. Uh, you can register just at enable.com forward slash events. Um, I generally request uh, questions just be sent to me ahead of time, just so I can prepare and give you the best possible answer. So if you're thinking of attending and you have questions, uh, get those over to me, that'd be great. Um, and then I have a couple of boot camps coming up in March, uh, again, that you may want to uh, register for. March 22nd is a brand new one that I'm just trying to put the finishing touches on so I can get out the door over to content for approval. And it's, it's uh, oh, I forgot to update this. I changed the name. Um, it's called Cracking the Code to Growing Your MSP Business. Um, but basically, it's all about talking about the, the three pillars of excellence that our top MSPs uh, subscribe to. And one of them is they create a roadmap um, that helps drive and give a focus and direction uh, to their business. And then the other two pillars really work to kind of help implement that, that roadmap and really help to improve your uh, MSP from a, a revenues perspective and from a, a operational efficiency perspective. So uh, that's going to be coming out March 22nd, but you can register for it now, but it's called uh, Cracking the Code uh to growing your msp business so if you see that there and then march 24th uh is another boot camp that i'm delivering with our head security nerd lewis pulp based on building to a cybersecurity framework so he's going to go into the couple of different frameworks that msps can use um, as they're trying to evolve their business to have more of a uh, an enhanced cyber uh security posture and then I kind of bring the, the business benefits and, and the program design elements into that uh, in the meantime. So that's taking place March the 24th. Um, any questions on, on any of that, any of the content, uh, you have my contact information there, my enable uh, email address. I'm on LinkedIn. So if you're on LinkedIn, we should be connected. And then uh, I'm on Twitter as well. So thanks, Tracy. Thanks, Stephanie. So a question here, I think that, it be, so first of all, I want to say something. Uh, Kobe is asking if, what are the costs for Market Builder. There are none. Market Builder is included with your subscription to an Enable product. So as long as you're an uh, Enable partner, you have access to Market Builder. Um, so the other question here from Nathan, um, I'm going to hand this over to Manny, is Nathan is saying he's just getting started with Market Builder and he wanted to know what's a good way to start. How did you start, Manny? Was it with social media, email? How did you start? Um, <clears throat> learning how to upload your contacts. Uh, it's very important. I've spent a lot of time on that. And then from there, uh, the first campaign I think I used was the value of an MSP. And again, I use the entire campaign uh, I studied it first. I used the entire campaign because you guys know what you're doing when it comes to marketing. I'm a technical person. I'm not a marketing person. So it was perfect for me. And I learned a lot, too. I'm learning how to become a marketing person and what to say and what to use. And so I use the campaign as it is. And you can trust it. That's the thing about it is, you, you know, I've had these programs before where you, you send stuff out. You can't trust it. Now, I'm not suggesting that you don't review it and validate everything in there you should do that but at this point the things have flowed enough for me where even if there's a minute mistake it's not even noticeable um so i i just put in all of my contact information my email my sms text messaging for when people fill out forms the whole nine yards and i launch it and i take uh like if there's four usually there are four emails in a campaign i'll send one a week and then um uh, I'll follow up uh, on those by looking at the leads and I'll go to the leads and, and I'll make sure that they're not the do not contact and I'll reach out to them with a phone call or an email and uh, it's gravy. I mean, I, I, I don't want to make it sound too easy because it's not. You still have to get out there and hustle. But at the same time, a lot of the heavy, uh, heavy work has been done. And now all you have to do is pretty much just be a technical and a salesperson uh, and close the deal. That's, that's just my experience. Thanks so much, Manny. I really appreciate that. And that was a, a really great, thorough answer. 
So um, there's a couple of questions I'm going to take offline uh, that are a bit more technical. I know uh, uh, Shamika had asked one, and so I'm going to take that one offline, and, and I'll work with you separately on that, on editing contact details. Um, if there are no other questions, uh, we're going to end today, and we are already at the top of the hour. So thank you, everybody, for attending our office hours today, and thank you, thank you, Manny, for jumping in and uh, letting folks know how you're using Market Builder and how it's impacting your business. My pleasure. Thanks, all. Have a great day. Thanks, everyone. Bye.